the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Sri Lanka's newly elected President Anuradha Nayaka meets Central Bank Governor Nandalal Virasinghe and Treasury Secretary Mahinda Sirivardhana to discuss the current financial position of the country. IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva writes to President Isanayaka, assuring that the global lender remains a steadfast partner and stands ready to assist Sri Lanka to achieve its development and reform goals. The positive trajectory prevails at the Colombo Boers as the ASPI and SNPSL20 close with the gains midweek. And China's central bank unveils measures to revive the country's economy, including cutting its key interest rate to restore global confidence after a raft of disappointing data. From Studio 24, here's Anuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Sri Lanka's newly elected president Anuradha Nayaka had met Central Bank Governor Nandalal Virasinghe and Treasury Secretary Mahinda Sirivardhana. Mind Sirivadana was reappointed as Treasury Secretary earlier yesterday. According to a government statement, the current economic situation of the country was discussed at length during the meeting. The Department of Government Information also stated that the measures to stabilize the economy and several issues affecting the country's economy were discussed. Sirivardhana was reappointed as the Secretary to the Minister of Finance, Economic Development, Policy Formulation, Planning and Tourism and resumed duties today. Deputy Secretaries of Treasury, Heads of Departments under the Minister of Finance and other senior officials attended the event. International Monetary Fund Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva has assured Sri Lanka's newly elected president that the global leader remains a steadfast partner and stands ready to assist Sri Lanka to achieve its development and reform goals, including under the ongoing IMF support program. In a letter addressed to President Isanayaka congratulating him on his election as the president, the IMF chief expressed confidence that his leadership will help secure a future of stability, prosperity and inclusive growth for Sri Lanka. The letter re-emphasized that the IMF greatly valued the excellent engagement that they have had with Sri Lanka over the years. She further said that the IMF looks forward to working together with the new Sri Lankan president and his team towards building on the hard-won gains that have helped put Sri Lanka on a path to recovery since entering one of its worst economic crises. Georgieva said she looks forward to deepening the mutually beneficial relationship between the IMF and Sri Lanka and wished the president every success in his endeavors. On a related note, addressing the nation tonight, President Andhra Kumar Disanayaka says all steps needed for the expected change depend on building stability and trust in the economy. Therefore, discussions with the IMF will resume soon and the process of the extended fund facility will be advanced. The debt restructuring process will continue and steps will be taken to bring about debt relief as soon as possible through discussions with relevant parties. Airport and Aviation Services Sri Lanka Private Limited announced the tender for Bandaranaike International Airport Development Project Phase 2, which aims to accomplish the full scope of the project funded by the JICA's order loan by the end of 2027 to meet the growing passenger demand in Sri Lanka. In the end of July 2024, upon the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding on Debt Restructuring by members of the Official Creditors Committee and the Government of Sri Lanka, the JICA has restarted disbursement for all the JICA-funded projects, including the BIA project. JICA recognized the BIA project as one of the most important projects between Sri Lanka and Japan and hoped that the new airport facilities to be built under the project will contribute to inviting more foreign investors to Sri Lanka and increasing the country's foreign currency earnings. The JICA will continue to provide the AASL with assistance necessary to complete the BIA project. Sri Lanka's tourism industry is anticipating continued growth following the recent presidential election, widely regarded as one of the more peaceful in the nation's history. 
the newly elected president has prioritized this sector pledging to unlock its full potential this commitment coupled with proactive initiatives from the industry leaders sri lankan tourism development authority and the sri lankan tourism promotion bureau is bolstering confidence in island's tourism offerings meanwhile priyanka fernando the chairman of the sltda notes that their main objective is to develop sri lankan tourism on a sustainable platform ushering benefits to the community and focusing on the development of regional tourism he also emphasized the need to support the industry to recover from the financial financial burden it is currently facing sri lanka is further taking concrete steps to welcome more visitors visa free travel for citizens of 39 countries will begin next month and the tourism industry is optimistic about the reinstatement of the streamlined electronic travel authorization system pending a court decision these initiatives have the tourism authorities confident in reaching its target of 2.3 million tourist arrivals this year Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lin Jian said that China is willing to continue to play a constructive role in the smooth economic and social development of Sri Lanka on the premise of the principle of non-interference in internal affairs. Chinese President Xi Jinping said he hoped to broaden cooperation with Sri Lanka under his belt and broad infrastructure initiative as he congratulated Sri Lanka's new leader. He said Beijing would promote the steady progress of sincere mutual assistance between China and Sri Lanka as well as our age-old strategic cooperative partnership and create more benefits for the people of both countries. Western critics accuse China of using the BRI to enmesh developing nations in unsustainable debt to exert diplomatic leverage over them or even seize their assets. In October 2023, Sri Lanka announced an agreement with the Export-Import Bank of China to delay payments on about 4.2 billion dollars worth of loans the Chinese lender has extended to the country. Let's take a short commercial break. Market updates on the other side. This is the nightly business report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The positive sentiment following the presidential elections prevail at the Colombo bourses, with both the ASPI and S&P SL20 flooding gains midweek. To get a summary of how the market performed today, we now connect with Netmi Fernando from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The broad market sustained the bullish trend for the seventh consecutive session, buoyed by improved sentiment among investors after the presidential election. The majority of banking sector companies along with blue chip stocks saw price gains across the board significantly uplifting the index. Hatton National Bank, Commercial Bank, Sampath Bank emerged as the top positive contributors to the index during the day. Additionally, almost every sector experienced price gains across the board. Subsequently, ASPI halted the session at 11,660, gaining 326 points, reaching to over a two-month high. Uh, amidst the improved participation from high net worth investors, turnover inclined to LKR 4 billion, reaching nearly a two-month high and marking over a 271.6 percent increase uh, from the monthly average, standing at LKR 1.1 billion. The banking sector solely contributed 46 percent to the overall turnover, whilst the capital goods and food, beverage, and tobacco sectors jointly contributed 27 percent to the overall turnover. The central bank hosted its weekly bill auction today. To get an understanding on how today's auction will impact the secondary market, we have with us Ranjan Ranthunga from First Capital Holdings. CBS conducted its weekly treasury bill auction today, where LKR 120 billion was offered and accepted by the central bank. Many bids were enticed on the three months and the six months maturity, while CBS also collectively accepted about LKR 119.5 billion from the respective maturity itself. Moreover, reduction in rates was also observed in the auction. Where weighted average yields came down slightly on the six months and the 12 month tenors, while three month yield remained unchanged. Therefore, central bank accepted 71.7 billion from the three months maturity at 10.49, while LKR 47.8 billion was accepted from the six months maturity at a rate of 10.7 10.72, down by 4 bps from last week. 
Meanwhile, from the offered LKR 10 billion, CBS accepted only 463 million from the one year bill at a weighted average yield of 10.05, down slightly by 2 BPS compared to last week. Meanwhile, in the secondary market, active buying interest was observed during the day, supported by the return of political stability to the market. On the back of this, weighted average yields came down across the board with yield curve dropping below 13%. Gold prices extended their record high run into Asian trade today as persistent optimism over lower U.S. interest rates weighed on the dollar with more cues on the U.S. economy due in the coming days. Spot gold rose 0.3% to a record high of $2,670.52 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December hit a peak of $2,694.75 an ounce. Among industrial metals, copper prices fell slightly after racing to two-month highs on optimism over stimulus measures in top imported China. Broader metal prices were buoyed by recent declines in the dollar, which sank to a 14-month low after the Federal Reserve cut interest rates last week. The central bank also announced the start of an easing cycle that is expected to see rates fall further in the coming months. Oil prices fell slightly in Asian trade today, cooling after optimism over more stimulus measures in China sparked strong gains in the prior session. Brent oil futures expiring in November fell 0.1% to $75.12 a barrel, while West Texas intermediate futures fell 0.1% to $75.46 a barrel. Markets took little support from industry data showing U.S. inventories shrank more than expected in the past week. But oil prices Prices were sitting on two weeks of strong gains as they rebounded from near three-year lows hit earlier in September. Prices were boosted by a mix of factors including supply disruptions in the U.S. and heightened tensions in the Middle East. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated against the US dollar in commercial banks today, compared to yesterday. According to Commercial Bank, the buying rates of the US dollar have reduced from 298 rupees and 78 cents to rupees 296 and 54 cents, and the selling rate from 308 rupees and 50 cents to 306 rupees and 25 cents. Now let's take a look at how the rupee fared against other global currencies. Going in for a short break now, the latest from the corporate world right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. TFCC Bank has made history again by successfully concluding Sri Lanka's first ever green bond issuance which was heavily oversubscribed on its opening day. This is a significant milestone for the country's financial sector, underscoring DFCC Bank's unwavering commitment to sustainability. The issue represents a substantial boost for the nation's solar energy sector as the proceeds are earmarked exclusively for renewable energy projects that generate significant environmental benefits. DFCC Bank's green bonds will soon be listed on the Colombo Stock Exchange and traded publicly. DFCC Bank's green bond issue received substantial interest from investors with Selling Life Insurance Limited acting as the anchor investor. Equity Partners Private Limited and Capital Alliance Partners Limited, key players in Sri Lanka's capital markets, played crucial roles as joint managers and financial advisors, sharing their expertise and experience in the corporate debt market. Director and CEO of DFCC Bank, Thimar Pereira, said that the overwhelmingly positive response to the green bond issue is a powerful validation of the confidence that investors have in DFCC Bank's sustainability strategy and their vision for green finance. 
The Sri Lanka Export Development Board, in collaboration with the Sri Lanka Consulate General in Dubai, UAE, is organizing the Sri Lanka Pavilion at JTEX Expand North Star from October 13th to the 16th. This initiative will feature a range of activities, including business meetings, networking sessions, and field visits across Dubai, aimed at showcasing Sri Lankan innovation and fostering international partnerships. JTEX is renowned as one of the leading technology and engineering events in the MENA and Asian regions and has garnered global attention for its expansive platform that attracts visitors from all corners of the world. The EDB has a long-standing history of participating in JTEX, having organized a Sri Lanka country pavilion since 2008 except 2013 and 2018. The 2023 edition of JTEX attracted over 170,000 attendees and featured more than 6,000 exhibitors from over 180 countries, with 24 conference streams covering a diverse array of tech themes. GitX Expand North Star, a key part of GitX Global, stands as the world's largest investor program. It offers a unique platform for investors to broaden their networks, explore cutting-edge technology trends, and engage with a diverse array of high-quality startups. For the first time, EDB is organizing Sri Lanka's participation in GitX Expand North Star, aiming to support 10 SMEs or startups in this prestigious investor program. The initiative is designed to enhance Sri Lankan companies' visibility and facilitate their expansion into the international market. HNB PLC recently collaborated with the Institute of Bankers of Sri Lanka to introduce IBSL's Diploma in Microfinance program to HNB's microfinance staff. The inauguration ceremony of the program was held recently at HNB Towers with the participation of IBSL Director General CPA Karnatilaka, HNB Chief Operating Officer Sanjay Ujemana, and over 100 enthusiastic attendees from the bank. The Diploma in Microfinance is a comprehensive program covering key areas such as financial inclusion, risk management, customer relationship management and the application of technology in microfinance. It offers a blend of theoretical learning and hands-on experience preparing participants for leadership roles within the microfinance sector. The DFCC Aloka Women Entrepreneurs Forum hosted by DFCC Bank took place recently in Kandy. The occasion demonstrated DFCC Bank's commitment to empowering female business leaders in the region. It also provided a platform for women entrepreneurs to discuss their issues and benefit from knowledge sharing, network opportunities and focus groups. Meanwhile, the event showcased DFCC Aloka's dedication to furthering financial inclusion and supporting women through innovative, tailored, financial solutions. The participants, made up of a diverse group of female entrepreneurs, highlighted the role of women in reshaping the business landscape and supporting the economic engine of the country. Shara Hassan, Vice President, Head of Pinnacle and Branch Banking Planning and Implementation at DFCC Bank, explained, DFCC Aloka goes beyond providing financial solutions and works towards creating a space where women feel empowered to achieve their full potential a comprehensive banking solution for women from DFCC Bank, DFCC Aloka has long been an advocate for female empowerment. Catering to women across all income levels and backgrounds, it offers specialized products to meet the unique financial needs of women at various stages of life, including students, professionals, entrepreneurs and senior citizens. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. More station stocks rose today with the Chinese market seeing outsized gains after Beijing unveiled a string of new stimulus measures aimed at shoring up economic growth. Regional markets took a positive lead in from Wall Street, where strength in technology stocks pushed the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average to record highs. U.S. stock index futures steadied in Asian trade. Sentiment towards stock markets remained upbeat after a bumper interest rate cut by the Federal Reserve last week, with investors now awaiting more cues from the central bank in the coming days. Markets rallied after the People's Bank of China announced a slew of stimulus measures yesterday, including lower bank reserve requirements and lower mortgage rates. 
China's central bank unveiled measures to revive the country's economy, including cutting its key interest rates to restore global confidence after a raft of disappointing data. China's central bank on Tuesday unveiled a raft of measures meant to help revive the country's economy. Governor Pang Gongsheng set out the moves at a Beijing news conference. He said the bank would lower its benchmark interest rate by 0.2 percentage points to 1.5 percent. There will also be a cut in the amount of cash that banks have to set aside as reserves, which should free up money for more lending. Additional measures include steps to boost the property market, such as a reduction in average interest rates for existing mortgages. The package was broader than expected, but analysts noted a lack of any steps to boost real economic activity. Some said the government would need to do fiscal stimulus in parallel, if it's to hit this year's target of roughly 5% growth. Tuesday's move comes as China's economic recovery continues to prove uncertain. The ailing property market is among the big drags, with the sector in severe downturn after peaking in 2021. A string of developers have since defaulted, leaving huge numbers of uncompleted or unwanted homes. Beijing has cut mortgage rates and taken other steps in a bid to revive demand, but to no avail. Data out in August showed home prices falling at their fastest pace in nine years. That is a huge weight on consumer confidence, since some 70% of household savings are parked in real estate. And that's all we have for you on the Nightly Business Report for today. We'll see you again tomorrow with more updates of the business world. I am Salim Mudan Thank you so much for joining and good night.